Hello and welcome back to another guide. My name is Saiken. This is a guide for Jagged Alliance 3 and today we're going to answer the question of 10 things I wish I knew before starting Jagged Alliance 3. My guides are precise on point, no repetition, no BS and I'm trying to get them done in a short amount of time. So let's jump right into it. Tip number one that I wish I had known before starting the game. There are a couple of key controls that you should really start to bind for yourself. The three that I want to let you know about are all about sneaking and selecting all of the members. Number one, you should familiarize yourself with the sneak mode uh, key. I left it at default, which is H. You definitely should know that number 1.2 is the key for Overwatch. I didn't uh, like uh, the Y key, so I bound V for Overwatch um, and it worked very well. Number three is the key to select all of your mercenaries. Select all mercenaries in squad. I've uh, used uh, the key that is uh, uh, left uh, to the one, so I think it's the tilt uh, key uh, that you use in order to typically get consoles up in uh, games. That will be important and essentially at the beginning of every single map I selected all mercenaries, put them into hiding uh, mode and since the preparation of an ambush oftentimes includes one of the mercenaries to set up with uh, overwatch, the overwatch key is key. Pun intended. Uh, let's move on to number two. Jumping nicely into topic number two which is the stealth mechanic. I did not fully understand and appreciate it at the beginning, but essentially the stealth mechanic uh, works as follows. The character has a little blue bar in front of them. If you are moving too close to anyone who can see you, mind, of, uh, mind you, a direct line of sight uh, or just proximity um, will cause that, you will see an exclamation mark over them and the small red bar begins uh, to move up. Uh, as soon as that red bar uh, finishes to, uh, to fill, you're going to be uh, discovered. As long as you are uh, still in stealth mode, you can take out individuals uh, without the entirety of uh, the camp the spawning. So as an example, I could go on and take out individuals over here to free Larry. And uh, only if I actually start the combat, the whole thing will turn up on its head. In terms of stealth skills, a couple of uh, things around that as well. As long as you are in stealth, you have the chance of a so-called stealth kill. This here uh, gives you the uh, percentage chance, so it's kind of a three in a, uh, in a four, uh, depending on where you are shooting. When you're shooting, uh, your weapon almost automatically pierces armor because uh, the target is unaware of it and you have a higher chance uh, to shoot at the target. However, the moment that you're beginning to shoot the target, even if you kill them, uh, there are going to be consequences of it. Um, enemies start combat under a couple of circumstances. Number one is when they see someone die, uh, even in their proximity. And number two, if they survive a shot, uh, and therefore begin uh, combat. Uh, but if you're skilling into stealth talents, what you will see is that they are instead surprised, as you can uh, see now. So I wish I knew beforehand how good surprise is, because now you can continue uh, just with normal shots uh, and essentially uh, get, the, uh, get the enemies down before they can even react. So I could, uh, in this case, for instance, take a second shot over here or uh, take someone down over here. So you do have a full uh, set of actions essentially before anything happens. So I wish I knew how stealth worked in detail. Tip number three, I wish I knew how to work around ammunition properly. At the beginning, it is quite overwhelming, but once you get the hang of uh, the ammunition, it actually starts to become much clearer. Ammunition is a limiting factor that uh, quote unquote nerfs, uh, nerfs a couple of uh, weapons. And really what you want to do is you want to make sure that you manage your ammunition well. The tips that I can give you around that is for starters, make sure that you always understand what kind of ammunition a weapon takes. In this case, uh, the sniper here, Gold Fever, takes NATO standard rounds, so 7.62 millimeters, uh, and that's the caliber, and only that is the caliber that it will take. So any uh, NATO standard round, any armor piercing uh, round, any NATO tracer, or any NATO hollow point will work with uh, said weapon. 
um, uh, equivalently all of the other weapons for instance the Uzi in this case will take any form of 9mm ammunition so in terms of maximizing what you can do with ammunition I would suggest to have a healthy mix of uh, weapons with uh, different ammo types and to also make sure that you're not only using auto weapons generally speaking one of the reasons why snipers are so and rifles in general are so incredibly strong in the game is because they are not taking a lot of ammunition what I can recommend uh, you to do is find a nice little combination of, um, of single shot rifles and just make sure that you build up enough of an ammo count what I would do if I uh, start over again I would potentially take Winchesters you can uh, see these are very strong weapons the Confidente here for instance is a uh, with, uh, a special Winchester. Winchesters take 44 ammunition and have a pretty long range. You can see uh, there is yet another uh, one. Secondly, I would uh, take various uh, rifles that uh, use NATO standard rounds, uh, for instance M24s uh, or the Gold Fever, which is a unique um, rifle. And then on top of it, I would potentially use the Dragunov, uh, which is yet another rifle that can single uh, shot and will use Warshaw packed ammunition. So with that, you already have three ammunitions uh, covered and they only use uh, one uh, shot each. You can easily kit out your entire team with those uh, weapons and never run out of ammunition. If you feel a little bit adventurous uh, and want to use um, any form of automatic uh, weapons, SMGs or uh, assault rifles, my suggestion to you is make sure that you're switching them up nicely. If you build your team around uh, SMGs, as an uh, example, the um, MP5 uh, for 9mm is very good. Um, the um, the AK um, uh, version for Warshaw Pack Rounds is uh, very good, and the Commando for um, additional. Um, NATO rounds and 5.56 five, uh, five, five, rounds is very good. In case you wonder how weapons look like, let me show you something where you can browse at your heart's content to plan that in advance. This here is a sheet that um, I'm using quite frequently with all of uh, the guns available. Um, and you do have different tabs for the different types of weapons. And within that tab, you can also see the ammunition type. So using the example of the rifles, for instance, uh, both the Confidente and the Winchester uh, are 44 caliber, uh, the Gewehr as well as the M24 and the uh, PSG are NATO rounds, and uh, the Dragunov would be Warshaw pack rounds, different uh, caliber. Later in the game you can even have uh, the M82 for 50 cal rounds. And you can really go through it, SMGs as an example, uh, AKSU, Commando and MP5 could be a nice combination to not run out of ammunition. So I wish I knew how important ammo is. Tip number four, I wish I knew how morale works and how important morale actually is. We're going to use uh, the example of MD here as uh, someone who is uh, building into morale. So morale uh, will uh, start at the medium level. There are certain factors that reduce it um, to low morale and very low morale and can rise up to high and very high morale. Morale uh, will, on lower levels, reduce the action points that you have. So the lowest is minus two action points, reduce the hit chance uh, and reduce your free movement range. In other uh, words, it will make your uh, mercenaries flat out worse. It also increases the chance that they panic or go berserk. You do not want to have low morale. The only way to uh, raise morale unless you have skills, something specific around it is to um, uh, headshot, make uh, exceptional kills, overkill, crit, um, or hit a lot of uh, enemies with a grenade at once. If you don't want to go through all of those ifs and whens and buts and maybe want a more stable version, I would uh, suggest uh, to you that you have at least one wisdom character. And in particular, after you get distracting shot, I would suggest you look at inspiring strike, which increases the morale whenever you do a 50 damage or higher attack. Take that on a sniper and you will not have any morale problems anymore. You can combine it with dire warning for a regular panic attacks 
and for shock and awe which automatically starts your characters with high morale and extra damage on that very character not for all of uh, the characters uh, high morale and very high morale will give you one and respectively two additional action points will increase uh, the movement range of free uh, movement and on top of it will uh, slightly increase your chances to hit as well as your range uh, on your character so all in all morale is ultra important and you should not sleep on it Tip number five, I wish I knew how armor penetration works and why it is important. Armor and armor penetration in this game is something that I needed to learn myself. So for starters, there are three forms of armor, light armor, uh, medium armor and heavy armor. Light armor offers 30% uh, reduction, medium armor offers 40% reduction. I don't have uh, medium ar armor on them. Oh, oh yeah, I do have it here but they do have weave on top of him, so 40% normally. And heavy armor reduce, uh, offers 50% uh, damage reduction. Weave, of course, puts 10% on all of it. The damage reduction when penetrated, however, is always 10%, uh, even for light armor. Now, uh, in order to penetrate armor, you need to have an armor penetration rating. And the game hides that a little bit. Uh, you can see that most of the weapons do have no or light armor penetration. What that means is, take the Gewehr 98 as an example, it uh, would go through light armor and only use the 10% reduced armor penetration and not uh, the higher armor that the uh, armor normally offers. Other weapons, such as uh, the Gold Fever, for instance, do have come with medium armor penetration as a default which means they would be able to penetrate armor of medium or lower uh, or light armor. Armor penetration is also important because you cannot crit enemies if they do have higher armor rating than your armor penetration. It's very important because many of the perks scale off of crits and you can also not simply stealth kill enemies if you don't have a free line of uh, shot. However, with stealth skills it's specific because armor oftentimes is bypassed by it because uh, the enemy is not aware of your attacks. One thing to note is armor penetrating uh, ammo which you can either craft for a couple of ports and uh, respective base ammo or uh, lucky enough to find armor penetration, uh, penetrating ar ammo will increase the penetration level by two, which means any weapon that does have light ammo penetration will go all the way up to heavy ammo penetration and therefore uh, will penetrate all armor in the game. Um, weapons like the Uzi with no armor penetration would go up to medium armor penetration. Still very good, but not perfect. You can see the armor of an enemy by basically uh, going Keep onto uh, said enemy and uh, uh, seeing what kind of armor he has and whether or not you would be able to penetrate that armor. Very important to understand armor penetration. Tip number six, when I started the game, I wish I knew how important crowbars and lockpicks are. Oftentimes I uh, discarded lockpicks and crowbars before they were really completely used. Uh, they start at a high condition. Whenever they are successful, there's a chance that they lose condition. When, uh, when they are unsuccessful, they always will lose condition. They cannot be repaired and uh, they can be scrapped afterwards for one part when they are completely down. Keep in mind though, and this is, uh, might have only been an absolute stream of bad luck in my two runs that I have done, um, these uh, um, tools unfortunately become rarer and rarer in the later parts of the game. So at the beginning of the game, where they are quite frequent, I would very much urge you to put them into a sector stash, let them lie there and uh, pull them out whenever needed. I wish I knew that before starting. Tip number seven, before I started, I wish I knew how to deal with the backs of Xien francs as well as small diamonds. Both of them should be retained. Uh, the backs of uh, Xien francs can be handed in in Port Cacao at a specific merchant, the Fisher, two of them every two or three days in game for random items such as chips or even weapons from time to time. Uh, they are otherwise quite useless, but uh, in that particular case, uh, they can work well. They can also be handed in uh, at, the, um, at uh, the palace 
where uh, you can get a couple of bonuses that way. The small diamonds, at least 10 of them should be kept as they can be handed in for loot bags at the Flea Town Market. I wish I knew that beforehand. The loot bags can actually be quite good um, because one of them has Metavion in uh, them and that in itself can be used for other quests. So really good items. Tip number eight. I wish I knew before starting the game that there are five uh, recruitable characters throughout the game that will not cost any uh, funds. Without going into the individual characters, I will just point you to the direction of where to find them. There's one character here in C5 uh, who is a hunter type of character. There is one character in the middle of the savannah right, uh, uh, right here, um, which is a bomb uh, type of character uh, whom you can hire. There is one character in Flea Town, more specifically in this uh, boutique in the church, uh, who has a love story attached to him, who you can hire. There is one character over here in Camp uh, Bien Chien, but it requires certain story decisions before you get that character. And there is one character up here in the Eagle's Nest that you can hire, which requires a lot of work before you can hire that character, but they are also quite good. So if you play your cards right, you can end up uh, together with your IMP with an entire squad that costs you nada, nien, nieto, nothing nix as they say in german so you could uh, very much use all of them and uh, save some money tip number nine the quote-unquote right way of dealing with uh, the order of uh, things here listen there are dozens of ways of playing the game but there is definitely a more correct or more efficient way to maximize the content that you could see I could go through the entire quest uh, chain with you, but I really wanted to just highlight the start as I assume that this video will be watched primarily by people that want to uh, start. So hear me out. These are the first things that I would do if I'd start over and want to see the maximum content. Step number one, clear the entirety of um, the Ernie Island, get Ernie, get the outpost, get back to Ernie, do all of the quests here, finish it. Uh, this is still going to be Tutorial Island. From here, settle over and land over here. Uh, take over this mine first, as this will be the easiest mine with no further um, requirements. From here, move into Flea Town, explore Flea Town, try to get the loot boxes as many as possible with small diamonds in the marketplace. Try to already um, explore a little bit of uh, the middle of uh, Fleet uh, Town and try to explore the northern section, which is quote unquote the ghost part of uh, the town, uh, to uh, basically uh, get the mansion freed up. From there, I would uh, suggest to move uh, further upwards to the so called Camp Savannah, that's E6. Um, and uh, G6, so here and here. So you make a detour into those two areas, maybe free the port in return so that it's easier for you to travel back and forth. Camp Savannah will be important uh, later and will help you to get a specific character. Then uh, start uh, to make uh, your way to the actual Camp Savannah, which is over here, free uh, Larry which is one of the characters, but make sure before you go there that you have Metavion if you do not have it yet. Continue to get loot boxes in Flea Town until you get Metavion um, or skip that step until you find Metavion to actually recruit him. From here on, I would suggest to go and start exploring the north, specifically Pentagrel. Uh, you will find the revolution there. They will ask you to uh, basically talk to everybody and their mother about the revolution and uh, hence raise the morale um, of Pentagrel to 100%. You can do that as you go. The moment that you have 100%, you can come back and get one of the best, if not the best mines in the game as a reward of that. Afterwards, I would suggest you to clear the poacher camp up here um, and uh, kill uh, all of the legion, uh, an abuser there, as well as get hints for another character called Flay. 
who can be either found spoilers uh, here in uh, c6 or in b4 either of these two are fine once you're done uh, with that i suggest you take over the mine over here and then slowly but surely um, make your way to d9 which you find over here um, uh, killing uh, the last kidnappers which is a quest that you picked up uh, down uh, in Pentagrail, essentially uh, over here. So that will give you a solid start. From here on, you can uh, explore the refugee camp, pick up a lot of uh, the quests here. At some point, there will be an interception for a help up here. Uh, go help uh, and uh, intercept the convoy and then make your way to Landsbach and get uh, the other mine at that point. This mine might have run out on Mission Impossible, but you do have the Pentagrail, the Landsberg mine, and A2, and it will be swimming in cash. The rest uh, can be done in order, quote unquote, but uh, if you do those things correctly, you already have two characters recruited and will have a very strong foothold that you can defend. I wish I knew that in advance because I went down here to Port Cacao and like a stupid idiot started to do jungle quests. Finally, tip number 10. I wish I knew how important wisdom is. Wisdom does not only allow you to effectively spot items, but it would also allow you to learn faster and train others faster. Training in particular is, an, is a core statistic in, of the game and a very, very strong function. Uh, characters with high wisdom train better, learn better and train better at others. Characters with high leadership are better in training others. So try finding characters with high wisdom, teach them leadership, and then they can teach whatever they know to everyone else. If you look at uh, this character in particular, uh, she had gained uh, 30 points of health uh, from training, uh, 13 points of agility, uh, uh, four points of dexterity, almost uh, 50 points in strength, um, as well as 60 points in uh, leadership, 30 points in marksmanship, uh, then solid uh, 4 points in mechanical, 70 points in uh, explosives, and 40 points in training. So overall, fair to say that she got around uh, 300 points in training, leaving her with absolutely massively staggering stats. And that's not the only character I had a run with high wisdom characters across the board. Just look at the high, uh, at the highlighted light green uh, version. These characters were just massive in training. All of the stats uh, became better. Stats can be trained up to 91, at which point the rest needs to be happening with field experience. Field experience uh, requires you to do a couple of uh, things. Uh, certain uh, skills are easier to raise than others, and they do have a bit of a cooldown once they have been uh, raised. It takes a while until you can uh, get field experience again. Other than that, manuals work um, as training as well. All of that is independent from a wisdom uh, uh, score, the manuals are. However, field experience and training are not independent from wisdom. Hence, wisdom and training in particular is very, very important. I wish I knew that before I'd started the game. This is it. 10 tips for you for Jagged Alliance 3. I hope that was helpful. I got a lot of other guides as well. And if you enjoy the content, feel free to check them out and leave a comment and a like down below. Take care and bye-bye.